Hi, this is Brian Joe, technical trainer for Parts Now, bringing you another Parts Now tech tip. Well, today I have a HP LaserJet M525C MFP. That's, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So this is a multifunction machine designed by HP. It is one that has a lot of very nice features. It's got a large touchscreen display. It has a pullout keyboard. It's got some nice features. It's got your automatic document feeder, scanner scans in color, monochrome printer. It's uh, fairly fast. It's gonna be uh, found in a lot of your small office, uh, home office, a medium sized offices. Uh, one you'll definitely run into in the field. Uh, what we wanna focus on today is how to do maintenance on there, on these machines. There's two different type maintenance. There's your automatic document feeder maintenance and your printer maintenance. Okay, we're gonna go into both of them today so you have a better understanding of how to do this in the field. Now, if you understand HP products through the years, you'll notice some similarities. This print engine was based off kind of the P3015 series, and you'll see some of those similarities as we're going through this, but there are some differences. That's why I wanna go over it with you. So let's go ahead and start with the print engine itself. Fairly easy to get around in this. We're gonna go ahead and push the keyboard back in. Let's put the display down. Power down. I'm gonna unplug it. Okay. Now, push button right here on the front. Pulls down the front. All right, you got your toner cartridge right here. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Just to give us a little more room. Okay, let's see if we can get an angle here where you can see. Right here is your tray one roller. Fairly simple. This is a very familiar design. You're going to pull out on the tabs on either side here and rotate out from the bottom. It's got round pins on the bottom of the roller. It just rotates on that bottom, okay? Now we're going to set that aside. It does have a little separation tab. Uh, this one's fairly easy to get out. I can usually get it out with my finger. Sometimes you'll get a flat blade screwdriver. Just pops up, snaps, snaps out, snaps right back in. We'll snap that back in real quick. Make sure you get it snapped in good. You don't want it in an angle or it'll cause a feed problem. Rotate in from the bottom, so you want to put your bottom in first. Rotate the top till it snaps in place. Easy enough. Okay, that takes care of your tray one. You have a transfer roller back here. It does have the same type release as the 3015 over here on the left side as you're looking in, but it only has a tab in the front. So let me get it pulled out here. Now, you'll see, it's got the little white tab. Most of them, the old types, had a tab in the front and in the back. This only has one in the front, so all you have to release is the front when you go to taking this one out, and it'll spring back up, make sure that spring stays in place. We're gonna put the roller back in. Line it up with the guide to the floor. Make sure your spring's in the right place. Push down, clips in. Okay. Tray one's taken care of. Tray two. Also familiar design. It's got two screws right down here. Whole separation pad comes out, replace the whole pad. That one's very simple. Now, on the tray two roller, let's see if we can get this where you can see a little better. Hope I don't drop it. Okay. It's got the roller with the, with the, the round cams on each side, the rubber cam. Uh, it's spring-loaded, so this is one of the ones all you have to do is just push to one side, push to the left actually, and rotate out. It comes out just like that. If this comes apart, there's a spring inside there, the parts will go flying. You do have to put it back together. That can be quite challenging. Put it back in, find the hole, rotate till it clips into place. There you go. Tray two is done. All right, we're going to move around here to the fuser. Pull your door back. It's going to hit a resistance right here. You're going to pull down past that resistance to where it lays flat. <coughs> Excuse me. First thing you want to do is unhook this white arm over here on your right side as you're looking at the back. And you have two screws. One right here. I'll get that later. And one right here. Okay. Now we're going to pull out from the bottom and then down to release the top. Got 
the door completely off. Okay, now we have this little paper guide assembly right here. This is also a part that's a holdover from the other print engine. You gotta be careful with this because it breaks easy. There's a tab here and a tab here. We're gonna release those tabs by pulling up, at the same time sliding this guide back. And it comes off just like this. Now, we're looking at the back of the fuser. You have one red wire assembly over here. We're gonna pull that one loose. You got a smaller red one right here. You're gonna pull it loose. You have a cover right here. We're gonna pull out from the bottom and rotate out from the top. And now that exposes the power supply where here's your main power supply connection. You have a little uh, wire tie right here going through the frame. You need to release that so you can get the fuser out. There's a little button back there that releases that. Okay, now we should have four screws here, one in each corner of the fuser. that's released, your fuser should slide out. Comes out fairly simple. Now this does have a cam over here on the side that's linked to a cam right here. That cam is linked to the front door. This is very similar to the P3015 too. Uh, if that front door is open, this fuser will not slide in. Make sure your front door is closed so your free fuser will slide in. All right, to replace the fuser, get your wires out of the way. Reinsert the fuser. Make sure it's all the way in before putting screws in. in the red wires here, smaller red wires on this side, plug in our power supply cable, and the wire tie goes back through the frame. Okay, that's good. Don't forget to put this piece back in because it will paper jam without it. Be very careful putting it in. It will break. You want to find the holes first and slide it forward till you, see, till you hear it click in place. That's in place, should be good. All right, from here, I think you can handle it. We've got the uh, cover right here. Don't forget to put your arm back on there and you should be good to go on your printer maintenance. Now I wanna cover your ADF maintenance, automatic document feeder. All right, let's try to reposition the camera a little bit here. That should help us some. Okay, you have your cover right here, latch right here on the front, all right. Roller, just put, it falls down right away. You got a release right up here, up here at the top. Just release it. Roller just kind of falls out. So it's that simple. All right, we're going to put it back in. Okay, separation pads down here on your uh, paper path. Uh, there is a release way back here at the where the paper tray joins that paper path. So you just kind of see the finger put the imprint right there. You just push in on that. The whole thing lifts out. So there's your separation pad assembly, okay? When reinstalling that, there's a spring right here that has to line up with that pad. So line that spring up with the pad first and then get your pad snapped in, okay? So there's the maintenance on that. Fairly simple to do. What you need to know on this machine is there is not a maintenance counter for the print engine. There's a maintenance counter for the automatic document feeder, so there's a reset. Every time you change an automatic document feeder kit, you can go and reset the counter in here. It's gonna tell you that maintenance is due every so many pages. It will not do that with the print engine. 
this one's design, the print engine is to have maintenance performed as needed according to HP. So you will not find a maintenance counter in here or a reset for the fuser or rollers in the main machine, only the ADF. So that should cover it. That's, that's how you do the maintenance on your automatic document feeder and print engine on an M525C, M525. All of those are gonna be the same type uh, paper path, same type rollers. Uh, should get you down the road uh, in the field a little ways. And uh, this is Brian Joe bringing you another Parts Now Tech Tip.